you know, I, I, any of the any of the 25 wins that I had, um, of course, the world championship is probably the pinnacle of it. Um, you know, as far as what's the greatest thing that uh, that I that I take out of my career, and besides that, just um, great friendships, great relationships, all the different places that have been around the world, and all the wonderful people that I've met. No, I think it's Valentino. Um, you know, I, I never really paid much attention to road racing before I started riding it professionally in 85. Um, Barry Sheen was a huge influence on my career. Um, go back and watch some of the old videos of him and Roberts. He's, uh, he's pretty special. So, um, Of guys of the older generation, Barry was, uh, Barry was the most influential. And guys currently, I think, uh, Rossi's style I really like. I, um, I, I miss the, the, um, the no controls, uh, sideways snapping, quick high side, you know, the, the excitement that two strokes brought you. But I think, um, you know, for, from, a, from a rider's perspective, careers are lasting two or three times longer now than they used to. Um, the four strokes are, are a bigger, heavier, faster machine. Uh, more electronic control, more forgiving, and of course the safety equipment continue to improve. Track safety has become something that's paramount. Um, track runoff, uh, barrier, safe bar safer barriers, uh, air fences and things like that, as well as leathers, boots, helmets, and gloves have all continued to, to just do nothing but get better. Um, Porsche loaned us some uh, 944 S2s, I think it was in 89. They loaned Martin Wimmer, Eddie Lawson, Myself, Wayne Rainey, and Randy Mamola won. Not one, each one. So we, we were five cars deep. Um, I'm not sure, I don't remember what happened with Martins, um, but Eddie and I and Randy's all got stacked up, bent up just a little bit. Not not undrivably bent, but beat up a little bit on a chasing Gabrielle Mozzarella from Alpine Stars. We were going from where Alpine Stars and Dainese were to uh, Venice to, to spend the night. Uh, we were going to go have a nice dinner and uh, Gabrielle got a little bit in front of us and I was next in line and then there was Eddie and then there was Randy. We were at the left turn line. Gabrielle went first and then I had to wait for traffic and I finally squeezed through. As I come around I'm trying to get up to speed and catch back up, I come around the tight little right hand corner and there's a, a lady in an old Fiat 500, you know, sitting turning left. And the building is right out to the edge of the road. So you can't see even around the corner at all. So as I came around the corner, like, Arr! ABS, kind of close up behind the lady. I thought, oh, man, I know what's coming. Next is Eddie, then's Randy. So as they left the light, I could hear Eddie go, Arr! I hear the tire squeal. I hear, Arr! I hear second gear. And I thought, oh, okay, here he comes, here he comes. As he comes around the corner, kind of a panic. Oh, man, this is going to be close. I take and I turn my car right up against the curb away from the lady in the Fiat 500 and Eddie comes right up to me and when he gets stopped I look at, I look up in the mirror and kind of make my man that's close and we hear Randy's coming we hear second gear we hear third gear and we're thinking and I see Eddie just kind of goes just kind of scoots down in his seat and Randy comes around the corner bam hits the back of Eddie's car Bam, he hits the back of my car. Just about that time, the little old lady in the Fiat 500 turns and we don't hit her, but the front of Eddie's car and the front of Randy's car were pretty beat up and it was just getting dark. So we had to stop on the motorway going into Venice for the next road we got on and borrow um, some tools from a, from a gas station to try and, the, the headlights on the 944s used to flip up they were bent and the hood was bent so that they wouldn't open we had to have headlights so we fried the headlights up with, I think with tire irons or something um, and then Eddie put his in a ditch Sunday night after Salzburg um, with a little bit of coaching from me he and I went out after the race and coming back late late at night um, trying to lose Somebody on a sidecar that recognized us sitting in a light in Salisbury. And I'm like, Eddie, come on, you got to lose that sidecar. There's nothing going to follow us back into the paddock and then we're going to be stuck with it. Anyway, so I tried to coach Eddie on what to do to go down the hill and make this corner really quick so these people wouldn't see us. We missed the corner, went a little bit wide and ended off in a big ravine. 
So we had uh, four pretty messed up courses, and I don't remember exactly what happened to Martin's. The reason Eddie was driving that night was I was leaving the track. He and I were leaving the track together to go into Salzburg. And as we got to the track, Randy had just gone out in front of us. Well, the guy who was guarding the gate, you just have to drive across the track to get out. The guy who was guarding the gate there had gone to talk to Randy. And when he did, Eddie goes, let's go do a lap. So I turned onto the racetrack and around Salzburg we went, and around the racetrack we went. We came back around to finish the lap and leave the track. The guy who was in charge of security, the guy who was in charge of security was not very happy with us. And he was, if you remember uh, James Bond movie, the guy Jaws, about eight foot tall, metal, bunch of metal. T he looked exactly, and was the same size. And this guy was like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to go out on the track. And I was like, yeah, okay, well. He's like, roll the window down. So I, you know, cracked the window about that far. He goes, roll the window down. And I rolled it down a little bit further. And he reached in, grabbed the door handle, unlocked the door, went to yank, yank the door open, went to pull me out of the car. But I had my seatbelt on. So he couldn't get me out. And I started laughing. And he was like, what's so funny? And I said, nothing really. He says, what's your name? And I said, Wayne Rainey. And he says, yeah, I know you are. Ah, and Eddie's in the passenger seat just dying laughing. And he says, what are you laughing about? He says, I don't know. He says, what's your name? He goes, Randy Mamola. Well, the problem was he just talked to Randy. So he knew that wasn't Randy. And when he went to slam the door, he slammed the door with the window down that, that far so hard that the window shattered glass in the side of my head I mean and you know what a, you cut your head just a small cut it's like I look at Eddie and Eddie and I both unclip and it's 140 pounds and 140 and a little bit going after this guy that's eight feet tall and he's hurrying to get to his van and Eddie and I are swinging at him trying to hit him he's reaching for his radio Eddie grabs the antenna of his radio and smashes it on the ground um, you know, just a bit of, just a typical Sunday afternoon after the race. Uh, so I had to go tape the window up on my car so this, because it was raining at the time. And then we en ended up letting Eddie drive that night and then he put his car in the ditch later that evening. So um, he took his to the dealership to get, uh, we tried to pull it out that night with a four wheel drive. And I thought I had it hooked to a piece of the frame. I had it hooked to the sway bar. We pulled the sway bar out of the front of it. So he had to get that fixed on his, and I needed a windshield put in mine. And when we, when we returned them, um, I've not heard a word from the people at Porsche since. And I guess they want to loan us any cars anymore. <laughs> All of them. No, nah, you know, I have uh, my hands are pretty sore if I go ride my motocross bike or if I ride my mountain bike too much. But, um, you know, for the most part, I can still do what I want to do, ride what I want to ride, and still enjoy life. Um, I've got kind of a I got a left wrist that doesn't move 100% like it used to, and it doesn't really help my golf game, which, eh, whatever. <laughs> you know, it would be, um, but I think the speeds that the bikes are going now, I mean, uh, just a quick example of, of how much faster motorcycles have gotten in my entire career at Grand Prix racing. Uh, I never went over 200 miles an hour. I rode Suzuki MotoGP bike in 2014 at Circuit of the Americas and went 205 mile an hour down the back straightaway. Um, and that was just in 15 or 20 laps of five seconds off the pace of what Grand Prix racing was doing at that time. Um, to take them to Salzburg, um, you know, would, I think would would uh, would would be great to see from a you know a couple of riders. Let's go see how fast they can really go there. But I think from a racing standpoint, unless you're willing to move that whole mountain. Uh, that was on the left side of Salzburg as you were headed up the back straightaway. I think it's uh, it's just too unsafe. My parents owned a motorcycle dealership, so I rode a motorcycle my first time when I was three years old. Um, first racing probably at ten. Um, hair scrambles, a little bit of motocross. Uh, I rode some trial, observed trials competition when I was five or six. Um, and then road racing. I didn't actually ride my first road race until 1983. I would have been. 19 years old. Wow.
yeah, it'd probably be my the two influences and the two my two favorite riders. One would be Barry and one would be Valley. I think uh, between the two, they could ride just about anything. 